this Sunday, we begin to hear yet again of your glorious faithfulness, the grace you've given to us in the gospel, the, the faith we have in you that saves us from our sins, Lord. All these good works have their beginning and their end in you. And Lord, in the midst of this season of Lent, when we take the time to look into our hearts and pray that we would uproot anything that's contrary to your will for us. We thank you, Lord, that on this Sunday we hear that you are never done with us, that you are always at work in us, drawing us out of that old life of sin into that powerful new life of grace, and that you take the meager offerings that we give you, the tiny loaves and the meager fish, and you make of them an abundance for the sake of your kingdom. This morning, Lord, I pray that every word of my mouth and the meditation of every heart in this place and joining us online would be pleasing and acceptable to you as we depend upon you as our only rock and our only redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent, and this is a Sunday that is known as Latere Sunday. And the Latin word Latere means rejoice. And so today is sort of a break in the midst of the austerity of Lent. Traditionally, this is the one day during the season of Lent where a couple could be married. It's the day that fasts would be eased. Flowers would make a brief appearance on the altar, and so a note to the Flower Guild next year. Maybe we could add that into our normal rhythm of life together. It's the one Sunday where the purple that we array the church in for Lent um, turns to rose, a joyful reminder that the brightness of Easter is only 21 short days away. In short, Latere Sunday is a day of rejoicing in an otherwise solemn season. And so today's lesson from God's word call us to rejoice. But it don't, it, we're not called to rejoice in the things of the world, but rather in the immeasurable riches of God's grace and his kindness to you and to me in Christ Jesus. You know, without God and left to our own devices, we fallen human beings can never find reasons to rejoice that will last. All of our attempts to make ourselves joyful are fleeting because we always look for joy in all the wrong places. We rejoice in the success of our sports teams, but such joy is short-lived. Every season ends, every team starts over. Take it from a morning Duke basketball fan. Success is never guaranteed. That truth should give Alabama's enemies hope. And yet, we seek joy also in the things of the flesh, in fast cars, in fancy homes, in lavish vacations, and dashing clothes. But the shine of them never lasts. Before you know it, you're on to the next thing to get your consumer fix. I cannot tell you how many times I've purchased a toy for my sons that they just had to have, only to find it discarded a short few hours later off to the island of misfit toys. And I'm, of course, no different. What's a man but a boy with more expensive toys? Our culture tells us that we can find joy and meaning in rampant and attachment-free sex. But what a mess we've made of our lives believing that lie. We live in an age deeply confused about what it means to be a man and what it means to be a woman. And we are almost being forced by our culture to define ourselves by our sexual desires, define ourselves by the things after which we lust. And no amount of lust can ultimately satisfy because sin simply leads to more sin, not to lasting joy. Let me say this again. Fallen human beings cannot fill the hole of need that exists in our hearts because we're sinners, we're broken, and we're lost. We enshrine idol after idol, thinking it can save us, thinking it can bring us lasting joy, grant us an identity, make us happy, and nothing can. Nothing, that is, except the God who made us. 
who calls us to faithfulness, to calls us to let him order our lives, to follow after his commands, and who redeems us by the immeasurable riches of his grace. On this Letere Sunday, God calls us to rejoice, not in the things of this world, but rather in his grace towards us sinners. Today's lesson from 2 Chronicles, which are the very last words in both First and 2 Chronicles, they paint a sad picture of human self-rule and of the mess we make of things when we pretend like we are in charge and can find joy in our lives outside of trust in God. As verse 14 summarizes, all the people of Judah were exceedingly unfaithful. They were following after the abominations of the nations, a claim that could equally be said of the vast majority of Western civilization today. And they remained stubbornly unfaithful despite God's repeated attempts to reach them with the truth of his goodness. In verse 15, as Kathleen read to us, we are told that the Lord sent prophet after prophet to call them back to him because he was full of of compassion. And in the end, their disobedience, and more so their refusal to repent of their disobedience, resulted in their being carted off to Babylonian exile. And yet these words of Chronicles are full of hope, full of the promise of rejoicing. For through Cyrus, God was going to restore his people and bring them back to Jerusalem, where they could go up to the holy city and rebuild both its walls and the temple for the sake of his name. Most of you probably know the key verse of Chronicles by heart. The key verse of the books of Chronicles are 714, 2 Chronicles 714. It says this, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. That is the core of our hope. Latere Sunday is a break in the clouds when we rejoice in the promises of God, that he forgives the humble, that he restores those who turn from their wicked ways, and that he brings joy to your life and to my life that lasts. Our lesson from Ephesians strikes a similar tone. Paul describes us as dead in our trespasses, dead in our sins. We walked the course of this world. We were sons of disobedience. We lived the passions of our flesh. We carried out the desires of our minds and our bodies. We were no different than the rest of mankind. And so we were children of wrath. Only possible future we had was exile. From God. And then verse 4 comes in with maybe the most beautiful words in the English language. But God, but God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive in God. By grace you have been saved. This is joy. Nothing that I could do could save myself. Nothing that you can do can save you. Nothing can bring us out of death. But God, but God has saved us by grace through faith. If you and I will only humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways, then he will hear from heaven and he will forgive our sins and heal our land. That is our hope. Letary Sunday is a break in the clouds when we rejoice in the promises of God that he forgives, that he rebuilds, that he restores, that he brings joy to our lives that will last. Now, some of you may be here this morning or watching online or listening to a podcast of this sermon and you're thinking, listen, I know that I'm a sinner and I know I need to repent. But I have been listening to the lies of this world for so long that I don't even know how to break out of the habits in which I find myself. I want to repent. 
I want to find joy, and not in the fleeting things of this world, but I don't even know where to begin. You sound like Paul from last week's epistle reading. Wretched men and women who we are, who will save us from these bodies of death? Well, in the name of God, I call you to rejoice on this Latere Sunday. For the same God who took those five loaves and two fish and fed 5,000 men and countless women and children on that hillside in Galilee promises to take your meager desire to repent and to bring you out of the death of your sins and into everlasting life. I encourage you to reach out to me or one of the other priests or a friend of yours who you know walks faithfully with Christ or just to get down on your knees where you are and ask God to help you turn your heart back to obedience to him. If you and I will only humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways, then he will hear from heaven and he will forgive our sins and heal our land. And that is our hope. But today, Sunday is a break in the clouds when we rejoice in the promises of God that he forgives, that he rebuilds, that he restores, that he brings joy that lasts. And for this, we say, thanks be to God. Amen? Amen.